hello students <coughs> in this video i will be this is the second part of the previous video regarding inertial and non inertial frames of uh, uh, reference in this video i will be covering uh, a little bit more about what is uh, like other examples of pseudo forces and uh, also the concept of the apparent weight measurement in a lift which will be very important while solving sums for your examination and I will be giving you some important facts regarding the frames of reference. So let me start with uh, the concept of centrifugal force. Now centripetal force and centrifugal force these two forces are very important to be uh, noted. Centripetal the word means towards the center and centrifugal it means away from the center remember that okay. Now, centrifugal force is actually a fictitious force. It is a made-up imaginary or a pseudo-force. Uh, to understand it better, let us consider an object like, uh, for example, this. This is the object here, circling around, revolving around, um, because of, for example, it is attached to a string, and you're revolving around it in a circle. Okay. Now. Um, let the circle have a radius r and let us consider the object like a stone revolving in a circle of radius r by a string with a uniform speed v the circling is the circle uh, the circle i mean the stone is circling around with a uniform speed v now remember that the speed v here is the tangential force uh, in this circle for an inertial observer uh, the tension t in the string which produces the revolution provides the necessary centripetal force towards the center now this centripetal force has an acceleration of v square divided by r as you know from circular motion dynamics now if we consider the stone to be the frame of reference i mean if the observer is in the stone as we are speaking we are on a non-inertial frame of reference because the stone is moving with a revolving around the centripetal acceleration right so a frame of reference with an acceleration is always non-inertial so if you consider the stone to be the frame of reference uh, we are on a non-inertial frame of reference with an acceleration uh, v squared by r towards the center because it is centripetal now since newton's laws are not valid in a non-inertial frame of reference to apply newtonian dynamics to non this non-inertial frame of reference we have to modify newton's law by as we said before introducing a fictitious force or a pseudo force now let us consider the pseudo force of a magnitude mv squared by r since mass is the since m is the mass of the stone and v squared by r is the acceleration right centripetal acceleration so we have to consider the pseudo force in the opposite direction now the direction which we the real the direction of the real force that is the real force by here i mean the centripetal force is towards the center so as we know pseudo force is always as is a negative quantity so the direction is always opposite to the re applied real applied force so we have to consider a uh, pseudo force uh, we have to we have to consider a pseudo force of magnitude mv square by r in the opposite direction that is away from the center in addition to the real centripetal force which is towards the center so this pseudo force is called the centrifugal force which is radially outward from the center now since this pseudo force is equal in magnitude with the centripetal force and away from the center uh, in the opposite direction to the centripetal force it balances out uh, the centripetal force and there is almost uh, so we can consider that there is no net force on the stone so because of this no net force acts on the stone relative to the frame on it so if we consider this diagram this is the stone here with the mass m this is the tangential velocity v uh, the uniform velocity v now this is the centripetal force mv squared by r we have an opposite uh, we have an opposite and equal magnitude in force in the opposite direction that is the central centrifugal force mv squared by r so that it balances out the centripetal force and uh, for the non initial frame of reference there acts no net force on the stone relative to a frame on it so this is actually the concept of centrifugal force um, <clears throat> now let us go to 
the another concept that is the concept of apparent weight in an elevator for example you are a person is standing on an elevator and uh, the weight actually weight and mass are different quantities as you know to measure the weight of the person a spring balance is attached um, below it to in the lift right we have an elevator with the person standing and there is a spring balance attached to it to measure the weight now uh, we have to consider a few cases here the first case is the lift is at rest or in uniform motion now according to the first law we have seen that this is the property of inertia that if a body is at rest or in uniform motion no net force acts on it so there is no acceleration right so the only uh, force acting on the body when the lift is at rest or at uniform motion is the force due to gravity there is no other external force so the weight of the person sorry um, so the so the weight of the person measured by a spring balance is the actual weight due to gravity since gravitational force is the only force acting on the person there is no net force because the property of inertia holds here this is according to the first law of Newton as we have read let us go to the second case the lift has an upward acceleration what if the lift or the elevator moves with an acceleration a upward in the upward direction the apparent weight or the change in weight actually is that the weight of the person recorded by the spring balance is more than the actual weight because the actual weight is actually the force due to gravity the weight due to force due to gravity and the changed weight or the apparent weight here is mg plus ma uh, ma uh, is the force due to the acceleration of the lift and it is added to the force due to gravity because it is in the upward direction now since it is in the upward direction we actually have the diff the difference is mg minus of minus ma since it is in the upward direction it opposes the weight due to gravity and the end result is the summation of mg and ma okay where a is the acceleration of the lift in the upward direction the third case the lift has a downward acceleration if the lift has a downward acceleration um, the direction it acts uh, by this I mean that it acts in the direction of the gravity so the weight recorded by the spring balance will be less than the actual weight because we already have a contributing factor to the gravity that is ma now the apparent weight thus is mg minus ma the difference between the two now let us consider the fourth case that is very important here the lift falls freely now what do you mean by falling freely always remember that free fall acceleration means that the acceleration is always equal to the acceleration due to gravity so here the lift is falling downwards with an acceleration g or 9.8 meter per second square so the apparent weight from the third case as we have seen is the difference so since a is equal to g we have the apparent weight as zero uh, so if a lift or an elevator falls freely the person inside it appears to have no weight remember this consequence remember this uh, as your conclusion so this is what we have to cover regarding the concept of apparent weight in a lift now some uh, will be asked regarding these concepts so remember these four cases thoroughly now let me give a few important facts regarding the frame of reference for an astronomical phenomena that is the phenomena of space the earth is considered to be a non-inertial frame of reference okay and for terrestrial phenomena that is phenomena on the earth's surface inside the earth the earth is an inertial frame of reference okay these two factors need to be remembered also for an astronomical phenomena the sun's frame of reference is considered to be approximately inertial for uh, simplicity of understanding and function okay for most processes it is inertial the frame of reference of the sun uh, for a fixed star in space the frame of reference is also inertial okay for easy understanding and uh, there is an exception to the terrestrial phenomena for um, wind and ocean currents that is inside the earth surface uh, on the earth's surface uh, these are terrestrial phenomena the earth's frame of reference is considered to be non-inertial remember this for wind and ocean currents okay and it's time and all the motion and dynamics related to it so this is what i have to cover for inertial and non-inertial frame of reference i hope you are understanding my lessons and do comment below regarding any improvements or what more do you want from this course thank you